Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all well. Today you're joining me for something a little bit special. So a couple of days ago, Sergio Loro, who a lot of you will know is from F3 Classic Tracks, uh, and really well known for his uh, 1960s versions of European circuits for Assetto Corsa and now R Factor 2, he got in contact with me and asked me, because he knows how much I absolutely love his 1960s version of Sandabort, if I'd like to have a go at a couple of his upcoming circuits. So he's given me access to uh, a beta version of Hockenheim GP and National Layouts, and also another track that I'll do another video on later, um, which is really, really cool, and will be out very soon. Um, we're going to do a five lap race here, have a bit of a chat about this, um, and then we'll do another quick race around the National Layout, probably in the Puma, uh, and, uh, and see how we get on. I'll also talk about why I'm using the GT3s, might do that first. As you can see, it's the classic 1960s wide um, grid layout. All the cars seem to handle it pretty well, uh, other than the uh, Mercedes that just took out a hay bale. <laughs> As we head into Nord, <laughs> there goes the hay bale. <laughs> oh, noise. Um, as, you, as we head into a Nord curve there, you'll see that there's there's no curbs anywhere on this circuit, so it's basically you and then grass. Uh, there's no runoff, um, and as you head into the uh, into the forest here, you get an idea of just how difficult it was to um, to race at uh, Hockenheim in the 60s. Um, it's basically you, grass, a fence, and then the trees. So you must make a mistake here, and it's it's race over. Um, of course. Um, famously, Jim Clark lost his life here. Um, so, yeah, you also notice as we came into Oz curve there, there's no Brems curve. So this is the 1966 to 69 version of the circuit. Um, the Brems curve one, two, and three, obviously introduced in uh, 70 and then 82. Um, give you an idea of the performance. So I'm running everything in full detail right now. I've got 24 cars on the grid, and obviously see there's a lot viewable, um, and I'm getting 80 frames a second through the forest. Um, I love the love the trees, um, really immersive. Uh, here we go, as we come into what would be called Ajip, um, but not in 1966, that's for sure. And then uh, into Sax, and as you can see, I, I think this is um, probably the hardest version of Ajip, Sax and uh, Opal, because there is no runoff, there are no curbs. And if you touch the grass, it kind of is race over here, uh, especially on the uh, outer edge of the circuit. You spin, you hit the grass, and then you just can't recover. As we come back through Sud Curve, uh, head past the pits and the grandstand, you can see he's done a great job of modelling the uh, the classic layout of the pits, including the uh, those all protective hay bales. I love this as you come through Nord Curve and then head towards the forest here. Absolutely brilliant. Just that sense of immersion as you as you go into the forest. Um, I love the uh, I love the uh, spectators and officials just standing on the side of the circuit as cars fly by it, 200 plus. Um, See, so one of the important things of racing here um, is that you will need to draft. It's very much like racing at somewhere like Indy. If you don't draft down the two main straights, you will get left behind. As you can see, I was able to hit 287 there, and then my speed kind of peters off when I pull out of the draft. Um, the road surface. Um, now, one of the things that I fed back to Sergio is that I really love the, the texture detail. So you've got little patches of uh, repair tarmac everywhere, which adds to the immersion. Um, but it would be nice to get some... Um, tactical feedback, or sorry, tactical, sorry, tactile feedback, some force feedback as you roll over those, especially at the patch um, right before Oz Curve. Uh, I think it adds the, uh, the technicality of that corner um, if you're having to deal with some force feedback as well and some surface change. Now there is surface change here through Agip, um, Sax and Opal. Um, there's elevation changes, slight surface changes here very easy to have the car rotate on you as you come through that section and obviously here as well through Opal and then through Suit Curve um, let's talk about the grass I love the fact that Sergio uses 3D grass 
um, I do not know why Studio 397 don't do it there's obviously no impact to performance um, and it just adds to the immersion of a 1960s circuit obviously there's no one coming down here with a mower and mowing this just for TV so um, absolutely love it love the fact that there's grass and flowers on the side of the road um, yeah so one of the reasons that I'm using the uh, in its current state the GT3 cars or a modern car is I tried to run the 1960s cars here um, F1s, F2s, F3s and also the endurance cars based on the Houston and the Houston itself um, oh there we go drafting and um, and here as you come into OS curve because those 1960s cars are low downforce and also want to rotate much more than these modern cars do they're braking on a curve they they start to rotate they touch the grass and they all spin out and end up in that water truck so it's it's pretty hard to run a thematic 60s um, race in single player at the moment but as Sergio stated um, there's still a few things that he needs to work on for this track before it's released um, so hopefully AIW is one of those things oh, oh nearly race over overcook that big time to sax try to make sure the car doesn't rotate through there and here as well oh my god let me in yes he is just love the immersion of this circuit No, there's no room for error here at all. <coughs> I might do a couple of laps. I think um, I think this would be uh, an absolutely brilliant track to do um, a night, a day-night enduro in because there's no night lights as you come through the forest here, so it's headlights only. Um, I might knock out a couple of videos, maybe some hot laps in, uh, in the 60s, um, F1 car, and um, it's on top of maybe uh, a night and wet race as well. I just wanted you guys to get to see this uh, and get my thoughts on it. I think we'll probably run the um, the Pumas at the Puma P52s or something like that at the um, at the national layout because they quite suit that track. Get a draft off this McLaren. You see what a difference it makes if I pull out. I'll start to slow down not be able to make that overtake probably. Let's see. Oh, he's robbing me. Yep, there he goes. So as I come through here, um, through Agip and Sachs, getting over 100 frames a second again. So it's already really well optimised. Um, I don't think he's got anything to worry about there. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, Overcooked that a little bit. Last lap. Just get my um, final thoughts on uh, on this layout. Um, I love the level of immersion. Um, I love, I'll actually love the colours. The, um, it doesn't look washed out at all. Um, the greens are really nice. It's got that classic look. It, it looks and feels like you're racing here in the 60s. I love the 3D grass. Um, I love the repair textures on the road. I just wish there was a little bit of feedback on those. There's a very, very slight amount of feedback on the road surface as a whole, um, but it would be great to get some real jolts from these um, patches of tarmac here. I think it would add to uh, the whole immersion level, especially if you're racing a 60s car around here. Um, and the only other thing is the AI line. So yeah, I'd like to see a little bit of work on the AI line. I think it needs to be moved or adjusted in a little bit from the left edge of the circuit just to ensure that the uh, 1960s cars can actually handle it at speed. Other than that, um, I think this track is absolutely perfect. I wonder if 
if I'll get past again. Let me see. I can't see if he's there or not because I've got no mirrors. Okay, Agit for the last time. Oh. <laughs> see, he gets nice and sideways through sacks. What would be Opal? Suit curve, and then across the line. Cool, very cool. All right, we might um, drop out of this one and then hop in the uh, Puma and do a uh, couple of laps around the national circuit, which is just off there. All right, guys, see you in a sec. Okay, everyone, we're back. Uh, I changed my mind. We're going to do it in the Datsun um, Triple S. So we've got six laps around the short course. This is 2.6 kilometres. Um, Give my thoughts on it. Um, they're pretty straightforward for this uh, for this one. Um, I consider this to be pretty much finished. If this was my product, I'd be releasing this as a standalone. Um, because this one's pretty pretty much baked. I think I think this is done. Um, road textures look a little bit more crisp, I don't know if that's placebo or not, um, especially as we come into the back back half of the national circuit here, you'll notice if it shows up on the, uh, on the, uh, the rendering of this video, you'll notice there's actually some kind of green mossy textures on the inside edges of the track which kind of really add to that um, little bit of extra immersion. I'd love to see uh, Sergio have a crack at uh, Cadwell Park, um, being as it's known for having moss on the circuit. Um, and I think you could do some really, really, really good stuff with um, just the way that circuit feels. Um, this one feels absolutely brilliant, uh, performs really well again, so 90 frames per second, uh, 24 cars again on a short circuit, um, all visible, uh, as you can see, being as I don't have any mirrors. They are handling this one a lot better than the, um, the AI um, for the GP circuit, especially with these bluebirds. Um, they are tail happy anyway, and they seem to be dealing with it very well. Extremely competitive round here. I've got these guys set to 100, and maybe 105, um, and I can't really keep up. So AI line basically perfect, um, textures basically perfect, um, I can't see any um, gaps between the road surface and um, the, the grassed edge, um, so to me this one's done, uh, even, even the back of the grandstands look great, love the undulations in the, uh, in the barbed wire fence. Little, um, on the rise there. It's actually quite a technical little circuit. Um, the national circuit's probably the uh, the least changed of any part of the um, the Hockenheim circuit as a whole from 1966. Um, the only thing that's actually changed is an extra corner layout was added to um, the last corner before uh, Agip. So really, it's the only thing that remains of that 1960s layout. And of course, suit curve, the straight and north curve. But as you can see, running really, really well, looks great. No drafting here, obviously, it's too short. These little bluebirds handle, um, kind of hitting the grass a little bit too, a little bit better than the cows do on the um, on the GP circuit. Should have dropped down a cog there. Sense of immersion and closeness again is really good um, on this national layout. You've got extra objects around the place, you've got the fenced off section at the back there. You've got me not being able to pick the right gear.
this is great. So, I mean, my final thoughts, I guess, are I would urge anyone um, that likes 1960s um, European circuits, and especially short layouts like this, great for fun cups, that type of thing, um, I'd really urge you to uh, go and pick this up when Sergio releases it. I think it'll be um, well worth it. I mean, it's going to be free if you don't want to pay anything for it, so... Um, can't get much more worth it than that. I definitely won't be picking this up for three for free. I'll be um, I'll be throwing a few euros at, at Sergio for this. The guy's passionate about it. He um, puts out great work. He interacts with the community really well. Um, so yeah. definitely be a, uh, a staple short course layout for me uh, when more of these um, classic 70s kind of tours are released. This is absolutely brilliant. Sideways. Go, 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 go. Oh, locked it up big time. Two laps to go. Again, this is one of those circuits and car combinations that just puts a smile on your face. Miss that gear shift. Can I get the inside? No. Last lap. So my final thoughts on this one. Absolutely brilliant. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Never actually raced on the national layout before in any sim that I've ever played. Um, so I don't know how this compares uh, accuracy wise, but um, I can speak for the quality of it. This is, this is brilliant. Again, my feedback from before, it'd be great to see some more surface detail in the feedback, um, especially over that packs, patched section at the back there. Um, I think that'd really add um, to the excitement of driving this short circuit. Ooh. So hopefully Sergio can look at that before um, release, but that would be my only, only piece of feedback on this. I think this is um, basically finished. So you guys, um, when this is released, um, if you love old Hockenheim, I would strongly urge you to go and pick this up. Oh, lost it right at the end there. There we go. Fifth. Not too bad. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, uh, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and I'll be sure to upload more content soon. Uh, and I'll definitely be uploading another video very shortly for another release from Sergio. So have a good one, guys. Bye.